Blessed be our God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, we pray you graciously to hold this your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed and given into the hands of sinners, and to suffer death upon the cross, who now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. See, my servant shall prosper. He shall be exalted and lifted up and shall be very high. Just as there were many who were astonished at him, so marred was his appearance beyond human semblance and his form beyond that of mortals. So he shall startle many nations. Kings shall shut their mouths because of him. For that which had not been told them they shall see, and that which they had not heard they shall contemplate. Who has believed what we have heard? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant and like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by others, a man of suffering and acquainted with infirmity. And as one from whom others hide their faces, he was despised, and we held him of no account. Surely he has borne our infirmities and carried our diseases. Yet we accounted him stricken, struck down by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole, and by his bruises we are healed. All we like sheep had gone astray. We have all turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter and like a sheep that before its shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By a perversion of justice, he was taken away. Who could have imagined his future? for he was cut off from the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people. They made his grave with the wicked and his tomb with the rich, although he had done no violence and there was no deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him with pain. When you make his life an offering for sin, he shall see his offspring and shall prolong his days. Through him the will of the Lord shall prosper. Out of his anguish he shall see light. He shall find satisfaction through his knowledge. The righteous one, my servant, shall make many righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore I will allot him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out himself to death and was numbered with the transgressors. Yet he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. The word of the Lord.
reading from the letter to the Hebrews. The Holy Spirit testifies, saying, This is the covenant that I will make with them. After those days, says the Lord, I will put my laws in their hearts, and I will write them on their minds. He also adds, I will remember their sins and their lawless deeds no more. Where there is forgiveness of these, there is no longer any offering for sin. Therefore, my friends, since we have confidence to enter the sanctuary by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain, that is, through his flesh, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us approach with a true heart, in full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience, and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who has promised is faithful. Let us consider how to provoke one another to love and good deeds, not neglecting to meet together as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. The word of the Lord.
Please be seated. I'd like to invite those who will be assisting in the reading of the Passion to come forward. And if you can come forward to the front there in front of the, the uh, kneeler and face the people, that would be great. And you can face, yeah, that'd be great. Thank you. The Passion of Our Lord Jesus Christ According to John. Jesus went out with his disciples across the Kidron Valley, and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother, and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. After this, when Jesus knew that all was now finished, he said in order to fulfill the scripture, I am thirsty. A jar full of sour wine was standing there, so they put a sponge full of the wine on a branch of hyssop and held it to his mouth. Then Jesus had received the wine, he said, It is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Since it was a day of preparation, the Jews did not want the bodies left on the cross during the Sabbath, especially because that Sabbath was a day of great solemnity. So they asked Pilate to have the legs of the crucified men broken and the bodies removed. Then the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who had been crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and at once blood and water came out. He who saw this has testified so that you also may believe. His testimony is true, and he knows that he tells the truth. These things occurred so that the scripture might be fulfilled. None of his bones shall be broken. And again, another passage of scripture says, they will look on the one whom they have pierced. After these things, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, though a secret one because of his fear of the Jews, asked Pilate to let him take away the body of Jesus. Pilate gave him permission, so he came and removed his body. Nicodemus, who had at first come to Jesus by night, also came bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, weighing about a hundred pounds. They took the body of Jesus and wrapped it with spices and linen cloths according to the burial custom of the Jews. Now there was a garden in the place where he was crucified. And in that garden there was a new tomb in which no one had ever been laid. And so because it was the Jewish day of preparation and the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there.
You may be seated. It's easy to be a Christian at Christmas. Remembering gathering here on Christmas Eve to that charming pageant with the children in their angel wings and donkey suits, we, along with the whole world, huddle around a wooden manger, swinging sweet, singing sweet lullabies to the baby God named Jesus. The hopes and dreams of all the years were met in him that night. Who can't believe in an innocent, tender God when he burps on our shoulders or he wets our hands when we hold him? God, so cute and cuddly, you just want to pinch his cheeks. It's not so easy to be a Christian on Good Friday. Just look around this place. No, there's no overflowing church this afternoon. There are no children in little bow ties and red velvet dresses. The baby Jesus is all grown up and he is in big, big trouble. The same hands that held him as a baby now hail him and nail him to the hard wood of that cross. Crucify him! Crucify him! We shout our fists raised in anger toward this God, this in impotent, powerless, useless, wimpy, woeful God who has let us down, who has not lived up to our expectations, who has not made our lives any better. Jesus did not do what we all wanted him to do, to make us healthy, wealthy, and wise, powerful, independent, free. He failed us, and so, good riddance. Our little Lord Jesus, asleep on the hay, is dead, hanging on a wooden cross, naked and beaten and bleeding and silent and alone, while we all kind of lurk in the shadows, wondering if maybe we've gone a little too far in our betrayal of Jesus. So we are silenced, and we are alone, too. No Christmas carols to rouse the spirits today. No words of encouragement to justify our betrayal of Jesus. Instead, all we can do is sit here and stare into the face of a God we helped kill. A God who came into the nitty-gritty of our lives so that we might have life and have it life abundantly. That we would learn to put away the sword to turn the other cheek, to love our neighbors as ourselves, to love our enemies, to forgive 77 times. A God who comes to hang with us in the hood of our lives, to reveal his nature to us as a fellow human being so that, so that we would understand God and never be afraid of God, Put our whole trust in God, like a, like a baby who trusts her mother. God becomes human for one reason, and for one reason only, to love us. All God wants is you and me. God longs for us. God yearns for us. God desires nothing more than a place in your heart and in mine. And for whatever reason, we refuse God's love. We choose over and over and over again to live this life on our terms. While Jesus lives for others, we live for ourselves. Jesus is a giver, we're takers. Jesus stretches out his arms to embrace the world. We take up arms to have our way in the world. Jesus has beliefs and values for which he's willing to die. We have beliefs and values for which we are willing to kill. Jesus is so humble and we are so proud, bound and determined to fend for ourselves at the expense of others 
so full of doubt and squint-eyed disbelief, we reject the love of God that comes to us in Christ Jesus. We want to do things our way. We actually, we actually turn our backs and we walk away from the God who is concerned about every sparrow, who adorns the lilies of the field, who leaves the 99 to seek that one lost sheep, who reaches out to the godless and the forsaken, who is anything but indifferent to your needs and mine, great and small. So here we sit this afternoon, guilty, confused, sad, alone, worried about a thousand things, a thousand things that are diminishing our light and stealing our lives. And if you're like me, wishing you could do something to make it better, wishing you could go back home to Christmas Eve and start all over again with this innocent baby who reaches out to us from the hard wood of a manger. How do we find our way back so we can journey with Jesus again? Well, maybe a story will help. It's one that author, you know, some of you may have heard this, Arthur uh, Max Lucado has written a bunch of books, goes and tells it, and the story goes like this. The small house was simple, but adequate. It consisted of one large room on a dusty street. Its red tile roof was one of many in this poor neighborhood on the outskirts of this Brazilian village. It was a comfortable home. Maria and her daughter Christina had done what they could do to add color to the gray walls and warmth to the hard dirt floor, an old calendar, a faded photograph of a relative, a, a wooden crucifix. The furnishings modest, a pallet on either side of the room, a wash basin, a wood-burning stove. Maria's husband had died when Christina was an infant. The young mother, stubbornly refusing opportunities to remarry, got a job and set out to raise her young daughter. And now, 15 years later, the worst years are over. Though Maria's salary as a maid afforded few luxuries, it was reliable and provided food and clothes, and now Christina was old enough to get a job, too. Some said Christina got her independence from her mother. She recoiled at the traditional idea of marrying young and raising a family, not that she couldn't have had her pick of husbands. Her olive skin and brown eyes kept a stream of prospects at the door. Christina had an infectious way of kind of throwing her head back and filling the room with laughter. She also had this rare magic some women have that makes every man feel like a king just being near them but it was her spirited curiosity that made her keep all the men at arm's length. She spoke often, going to the city. She dreamed of trading her you know, dusty neighborhood for exciting avenues and city life. Just the thought of this horrified her mother. Maria was always quick to remind Christina of the harshness of the streets. People don't know you there, honey. Jobs are scarce. Life is cruel, and besides, if you went there, what would you do for a living? Maria knew exactly what Christina would do, or would have to do for a living. That's why her heart broke when she wakes up one morning to find her daughter's little bed empty. And Maria knew exactly where her daughter had gone. She also knew immediately what she must do to find her. She quickly threw some clothes in a bag, gathered up all of her money, and ran out of the house. On her way to the bus stop, Maria enters a drugstore to get one last thing, pictures. She sits in the photograph booth, closed that curtain, and spent all she could on pictures of herself. With her purse full of small black and white photos, she boards the next bus to Rio de Janeiro. Maria knew Christina had no way to earn money. She also knew that her daughter was way too stubborn to give up. 
When pride meets hunger, a human will do things that were before unthinkable. And knowing this, Maria begins her search. Bars, hotels, nightclubs, any place with a reputation for streetwalkers or prostitutes. She went to all of them. And at each place, she left her picture taped on a bathroom mirror, tacked to a hotel bulletin board, fastened to a corner phone booth. And on the back of each photo, she wrote a note. It wasn't too long before both the money and the pictures ran out and Maria had to go back home. The weary mother weeps on the bus as it begins that long journey back, back home. It was a few weeks later that young Christina descends the hotel stairs. Her face is tired. Her eyes no longer danced with youth but spoke of pain and fear. Her laughter was broken, her dream a nightmare. A thousand times over, she had longed to trade those countless beds for that secure pallet on the floor of her mom's home. That the little village was, in too many ways, too far away. As she reached the bottom of the stairs, her eyes noticed, noticed a familiar face. She looked again. And right there on the lobby mirror was a small picture of her mother. Christina's eyes burned, her throat tightened as she walked across the room and removed this little photo. And written on the back was this compelling invitation. Whatever you've done, Whatever you have become, it doesn't matter. Please come home. And Christina went. Christina went home. For all of us who are tired and tattered and torn on this Good Friday afternoon, for all of us who are beat up and broken down, for all of us who are filled with fear and near frightened to death, for all of us who are worn out from seeing the pain in this world, for all of us who lost the twinkle in our eyes and cannot laugh anymore from those deep places within our hearts and bellies, for all of us who are lost, and lonely and want desperately to be found. Look at that cross. It's your only way home. It's my way home. And the message that comes from Jesus, whose arms are nailed wide open, leaving bare his heart of love, is this. Whatever you've done, Whatever you become, it doesn't matter. Please come home. Come to me, all of you who are weary, carrying these heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. I've come into your world not to condemn you, but to find you. See. It's not enough for God and Jesus Christ to be born like us. God and Jesus Christ is actually willing to die for us. The cradle without the cross means nothing. And those arms, those arms will stay open for eternity or until each one of us finds our way back home. Amen.
Dear people of God, open our, heaven, our heavenly Father sent his Son into the world, not to condemn the world, that the world through him might be saved, that all who believe in him might be delivered from the power of sin and death and become heirs with him of eternal life. Please kneel. Let us pray for the Holy Catholic Church of Christ throughout the world, for its unity in witness and service, for all bishops and other ministers and the people whom they serve, for Peter, our bishop, and all the people of this diocese, for all Christians in this community, for those about to be baptized, particularly Abigail Grace Cook, Leighton Amelia Love Camion, Maxwell Michael Bashich, Sienna Scout Strickland, Poppy Neil Galenick, that God will confirm his church in faith, increase it in love, and preserve it in peace. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you, through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for all nations and peoples of the earth and for those in authority among them. For Joseph, the President of the United States, for the Congress and the Supreme Court, for the members and representatives of the United Nations, for all who serve the common good that by God's help they may seek justice and truth and live in peace and concord. Almighty God, kindle, we pray, in every heart the true love of peace and guide with your wisdom those who take counsel for the nations of the earth that in tranquility your dominion may increase until the earth is filled with the knowledge of your love through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for all who suffer and are afflicted in body or in mind, for the hungry and the homeless, the destitute and the oppressed, for the sick, the wounded, and the crippled, for those in loneliness, fear, and anguish, for those who face temptation, doubt, despair, for the sorrowful and bereaved, for prisoners and captives and those in mortal danger, that God in his mercy will comfort and relieve them and grant them the knowledge of his love and stir up in us the will and patience to minister to their needs. Gracious God, the comfort of all who sorrow, the strength of all who suffer. Let the cry of those in misery and need come to you, that they may find your mercy present with them in all their afflictions. And give us, we pray, the strength to serve them for the sake of him who suffered for us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for all who have not received the gospel of Christ for those who have never heard the word of salvation, for those who have lost their faith, for those hardened by sin or indifference, for the contemptuous and the scornful, for those who are enemies of the cross of Christ and persecutors of his disciples, 
for those who in the name of Christ have persecuted others. That God will open their hearts to the truth and lead them to faith and obedience. Merciful God, creator of all the peoples of the earth and lover of souls, have compassion on all who do not know you as you are revealed in your Son, Jesus Christ. Let your gospel be preached with grace and power to those who have not heard it. Turn the hearts of those who resist it and bring home to your fold those who have gone astray, that there may be one flock under one shepherd, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us commit ourselves to our God and pray for the grace of a holy life that with all who have departed this world and died in the peace of Christ and those whose faith is known to God alone, we may be accounted worthy to enter into the fullness of the joy of our Lord and receive the crown of life in the day of resurrection. O God of unchangeable power and eternal light, look favorably on your whole church, that wonderful and sacred mystery, by the effectual working of your providence, carry out in tranquility the plan of salvation. Let the whole world see and know that things which were cast down are being raised up, and things which had grown old are being made new and that all things are being brought to their perfection by him through whom all things were made. Your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. He has the booklets for Stations of the Cross if you want to stay. He has the booklets for the Stations of the Cross if you want to stay. what I've been trying to do. Jim has the booklets for the Stations of the Cross if you would like to do that. He has the booklets for the Stations of the Cross. He has the booklets for the Stations of the Cross if you want to stay. I'm going to go. I totally understand. Your mic is still working. 